I'd like to speak today to the men who are here. Uh, men of Good Shepherd, men who are visiting, young men, old men, married men, single men. I'll be preaching to the men, to myself today. Uh, and women, I trust that you'll understand, and I'm hopeful that what I speak to the men will resonate some in your hearts and further, uh, that you'll pray for our men and encourage them to accept the invitation that I place before them today. Um, brothers, the message in today's scripture is clear that now is the time to prepare the way for the Lord. Isaiah urges us to fill in the low places and level the high places and make straight the crooked places and smooth out the rough places, otherwise clearing the way so that the Lord has easy entry. St. Peter instructs us to conduct ourselves with holiness and devotion and even to be eager to be found without spot or blemish before the Lord. And then John the Baptist echoes the words of the prophet before him, crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. The scriptures today speak to us words of urgency, words of action, of preparing. Of course, the Lord doesn't need a free way to get to us, and hills and valleys won't prevent his coming, uh, however, we can close ourselves off to his presence, and we can resist him when he approaches. And the Lord, as much as he desires to be with us, to strengthen us, won't force his entry. He asks for invitation. You see this in the book of Revelation, when he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And he waits for us to open to him. And those who do open to him, they get a seat at his table and a share in his victory. But one problem, brothers, that we face these days is that sometimes it's impossible for us to get to the door because there's too much stuff in the way. And sometimes we don't even hear the knock because there's too much noise in our lives. And the obstacles that prevent us from hearing and responding, answering to the Lord's call, they come to us in many and varied ways. Overworking, spending too much time on screens and consuming media, eating too much, drinking too much, using pornography, selfishly clinging to time and preference and pleasure. And maybe some of these things are in your way. Advent is a time for us to decide to change. Advent is this new time of the year, a time of new beginnings. A time of God's grace given to us so that we can prepare our hearts. Cutting down those high places of pride and selfishness and filling in those low places of worldly attachment smoothing out those rough places of vice and of sin. Now, during the season of Advent, it's a good time for us to decide to become better men. Better husbands, better fathers, better priests, better deacons, better disciples. Now is the time for us to decide that we will give the Lord entry, conduct ourselves with holiness and devotion, be found without spot or blemish. Of course, another problem that we face is that getting there is difficult, especially when we attempt to get there alone. Because when we are on our own, we are weaker. When we are on our own, we are more susceptible to temptation and rationalization. When we're on our own, we easily throw in the towel bend rules, cut corners. Becoming better on our own, even with a solid life of prayer, is difficult. And that's why I'm hopeful, brothers, that we will no longer go it alone, and why I'm hopeful that you'll accept the invitation to join me this year in Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is a 90-day spiritual exercise that provides men with a path toward freedom by way of prayer and asceticism and fraternity. 
And it emerged as a response to this uh, felt and profound need for a renewal of the church, especially a renewal among men. And those who created it, they recognized that many men today find themselves increasingly lost. Whether by way of isolation or distraction or addiction, or maybe just being stuck in a cycle of complacency, accepting what is mediocre. And for many men, being lost leads to attempts at escape. And turning to video games or streaming media, social media, pornography, food, drink, drugs. Many men lack authentic and meaningful friendships. Many men struggle to find purpose in life even while the whole world around them promises comfort. And many men simply find themselves away from the Lord in the season of spiritual dryness, feeling as if God is far from them. And none of these situations, none of these things that tempt us to escape, help us to become better, help us to grow in virtue, help us to become holy, to become saints. But the chances are that some of those situations and some of those temptations toward escape are our very own. And Exodus 90 aims to lead us out, and to lead us out together, to help us to let go of those things that prevent us from becoming the men that we were created to be, the men that God calls us to be, the men that our brides and our children, our families, our church need us to be. It helps us to get there by way of prayer and asceticism and fraternity. You might call these the pillars of Exodus 90, prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. So by way of prayer, men in Exodus 90 commit to daily prayer, to sustained daily prayer, meditative prayer, actively listening to the Lord as He speaks and speaking our hearts to Him. It includes a study of the book of Exodus, which provides the spiritual framework for our own journey from various slaveries into freedom. And there's reflection. And so we pray. And then in Exodus 90, we embrace asceticism. And by asceticism, we can mean self-denial. Right? And all Christians are called to self-denial throughout the year, not just during Lent. So here even in Advent, even in the Christmas season, even in the Easter season, we're called to self-denial. And so we'll take on some self-denial, which allows us an opportunity to practice penance for our own sins and to make a tangible offering for the good of others and to grow in self-mastery and freedom. In Exodus 9, this asceticism, the self-denial, takes the shape of abstaining and fasting from food, from drink, from media. And then we're not in it alone, because men in Exodus 90 grow in their experience of fraternity, which is an essential, an essential aspect of, of the Christian life. Because the more we are committed to the good together, the more we hold each other accountable to the good, well, the greater the chance that good comes about in our own lives, in our families, in our communities. And so in Exodus 90, we'll assemble in groups of four to six men. Men who will challenge us, men who will hold us accountable, men who will pray for us, men with whom we'll grow in vulnerability and good and true and authentic masculinity. And all of this journey begins on January 4th. Is 90 days before Easter. My desire, my prayer for this parish, for Good Shepherd, is that we will have at least five fraternities. 20 to 30 men from the parish who will begin their journey together that day. And so, men, here's the invitation. Make a commitment today to begin Exodus 90 on January 4th. And if you can't do that, then make a commitment tomorrow. 
because we can do this. And before you write it off as impossible or dismiss the idea as ridiculous, I just encourage you to ask yourselves, as I ask myself, am I as free as it's possible for me to be? Am I as good as it's possible for me to be? Am I as prayerful as it's possible for me to be? As chaste, as disciplined, as holy, as without spot or blemish? Is there anything that I'm hiding from my wife, my children, my friends? Anything that I'm embarrassed about or discouraged by? Anything that seems insurmountable? Is there anything that if I could snap my fingers it would be gone, would have been gone a long time ago, but hangs on? We all have these things. We could all do better. I think we know that. I think the obstacle here is that we don't always want to do better. And this is the case for me anyway. The idea of daily sustained prayer, I don't always like that. Or daily exercise, or fasting, or abstaining from alcohol, or sweets, or media. I don't always like what it calls for. But I do want to be a better man, and I know that that doesn't happen accidentally. I do want to give Jesus greater access to my heart, and I know that that doesn't happen accidentally. I do want to be a better priest, as I imagine with husbands and fathers would like to be better husbands and fathers. And I do want, with God's grace, to be a saint. And none of that happens accidentally. Now, Exodus 90 is not the silver bullet. It's not the only way for us to prepare for the Lord, to grow in freedom, but it's a good one. And it's way better than doing nothing. And it's way better than continuing to do the same thing, the same habits, the same behaviors, and somehow hoping that all of this will change or get better. And it's proven itself time and again, locally and around the world, to help men gain freedom, to drop bad habits and gain good ones. And so it's worth trying. It's worth trying because the world needs better men, virtuous men, men who live like saints, men who actually love well and freely. Our wives need men like this, our children need men like this, our parents need men like this, our church needs men like this. And so men, please pray about starting this journey. Ask the Lord for confidence, for courage, for humility, for whatever it is you might need to enter in. And if you're there already, if you're sold already, and I know that some of you are, some of you have talked to me about it already, then the request is that you invite some others into this. If you find more information in the bulletin, out there in the gathering space, and we'll provide more in the weeks to come. Soon, we're going to have an online sort of interest and discussion session about all of this, so you can find out more. And women, the request for you is first to pray for the men in your life, your husbands, your sons, your fathers, your brothers. Pray that they might accept this invitation. And then the other request is to encourage it and even allow for it, because it does hit home in some ways. But to encourage the men in your life to be about this. Because we hear very clearly today the call to prepare the way for the Lord. To conduct ourselves with devotion and holiness, and even to be eager to be found without spot or blemish. Now is the time to make that decision, and so men, let's get after it. Make a decision today to set aside some comfort, 
set aside some pleasure, set aside some preference, set aside some worldliness in order to make room for Christ, to clear the way, to step away from sin and into virtue, to become more and more the men we were created to be and baptized to be and confirmed to be the men the world needs us to be.